Hey guys, it's Saturday the 19th of November. That's now 10 past 12 in the morning. So it's actually just gone midnight. Right, in this video, I've got a bunch of die cast vehicles and whatnot that I want to show you. Uh, in fact, there's so much here, I think I'm going to break it down into two videos, okay? So, this video I'm going to show you what I've got on the desk here. And then, in the second video, I've got a box of Hot Wheels on the floor. There's 43 in total. And I've got a bag of stuff down here. There's not really a great deal of interesting items in it, but there is a few that I want to show you. So, we'll have a look at those as well in the second video. So... Let's get stuck into this one, shall we? Right, where's the PC desk? So, um, there is a mix on here. Obviously I've got brand new Hot Wheels that I've been and bought from my local Sainsbury's. Some stuff from thrifting as well, as the Americans call it. We just say charity shop finds over here. And um, there's five Britain's tractors here. I picked up today, as well as um, some Corgi vans up the end here. Now, the vans and those tractors I actually bought from a chap. I've mentioned him on the channel a few times now because I buy from him, I'd say, quite regularly actually. At least once a month. And it all started just actually the Christmas before Covid hit. Um, when I was just browsing Marketplace and I came across some um, double O gauge uh, model railway stuff he was selling. And yeah, I've just been seeing his stuff ever since basically. And he does um, car boot sales. Well, not a minute. Because, uh, <laughs> well, the last one would be today, weather permitting, so. Until uh, next spring, I think it's April, they start up usually around about um, Easter time over at Alsham. That's the one I like to go to. Um, but because Covid hit, he couldn't do the car boot sale, so he just kept putting stuff up on Marketplace and I kept buying stuff. <laughs> so uh, we got to know each other that way. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to start with the stuff um, I got from the charity shops because um, there isn't that many here actually so I've got two trucks here there is some die cast in it so I think we can class it as die cast that one I think is just a generic I don't think it's actually based on any specific truck and what I find daft with this one is look they've made it so the tailgate opens but it doesn't tip <laughs> And I've still got a price tag in there, it's 50 pence. Actually all of this lot was um, 50 pence each. Same with this one. This one is actually an MAN truck, that's why I bought it, because it was you know, based on a real truck. Traffic management truck, apparently. Why would need twin axles for that? I don't know. Well, I suppose by the time you load it up with uh, traffic cones, it might be um, carrying a fair bit of weight. I've actually noticed it's got red beacons on the roof, not amber. That would uh, be incorrect, at least for UK roads. Which I doubt this is, because it's left-hand drive. <laughs> really, well, it's a nice little truck. I actually quite like it. Some reasonable detail on it. You know, the headlights are detailed in. There's uh, the hazard markings on the front bumper. It really should have some on the back, really. I actually quite like that. I'll chuck that down on my coat. Um, then we've got three majorettes. So we've got this Citroen van. Now I've got this in blue, just plain blue, but this has got something written on the back there, as you can see. And that actually says, and I might butcher it as it is a French word, and I'm crap at pronouncing French words. Um, Charbonnier. That's the way I would pronounce it, at least. Um, if a friend of mine in France is actually still online, he hasn't gone to bed yet, I could actually ask him what that translates to. Or I can just type it into Google Translate later. I, mean, I quite like these Citroen vans. 
And I've never seen one in yellow like this, so I'll grab that as well. And it's in pretty good condition. I just think I've got two of them blue ones, and one got repainted white when my stepdad was playing around with um, painting some die cast vehicles up a while back. The next one is actually one that I've got already, but I quite like Majorette and I wouldn't mind doing like a custom paint job on it. And this one is a Fiat Ripmo. That's the way I'd pronounce it. There we go. Yeah, I've got a couple of these now. Whichever one is the best one of the two, I'll keep as is and I'll just do a custom paint job on another one. Perhaps just repaint this red and it'll just lose its... Uh, whatever that says on the bottom of the doors, hang on. That's an Arbath Abath, Arbath 2000. Quite a nice little model. And the last one it is a Renault van. A Renault 4L. Looking a bit sorry for itself. I've actually got a telephone one in like a cream beige colour. I don't know what this one is. This had something written on the back there, but the paintwork I think is too badly damaged to read. There's something on the hood as well. Oh, it's not actually words. It just looks like it's a symbol or something. Almost looks like a crest. It's got a lion on it. It's a fire service one, because I've just seen it on the side here, look. It's got the fire axe and fire helmet on it. And if that was in better condition, I'd have customised that and put a little blue beacon on the roof. <laughs> uh, there's actually one missing. <laughs> there's a Hot Wheels one missing. That might still be buried in the cup. As I threw it over here earlier. Nope, that's disappeared. <laughs> well, either it's disappeared or I've gone totally blind this, this evening, anyway. So, I've only got two Hot Wheels to show you, but the other one, it was only a um, Chevy and it's a duplicate I've already got. I actually threw it somewhere else, but anyway. It's a Chevy that I don't have, and I do like my Chevys. Especially the 50 Chevys. And we've got another Hot Wheels here. This is one of their fire trucks. Quite like this designer truck. What it's based does it say what it actually is, what it's based on, or I would say, looking at the grill and the front, that would be a GMC or something like that, or Chevy. That's what it looks like to me. Hot Wheels, my um, Malaysia, that's all it's got written on the bottom. Yeah, it looks like a GMC or something like that to me. Or Dodge, maybe it's a Dodge. <coughs> Right, next up, we've got a nice Corgi. Hard to believe that that was just 50p. Little Peugeot 205 Turbo. Not in bad condition. But it's done the typical Corgi thing with the plastic there, that all the chrome's coming off. I don't know why Corgi didn't just put, you know, chrome, proper chrome dyed plastic in there instead of just a plain plastic which had been painted chrome because that's why it's all flaking off <clears throat> I mean I've gone to the effort to put black colouring in for the black plastic so and we got a little matchbox uh, grader and I realised once I'd got it home that I've actually got one of these in the collection. This one seems to be a free hair attached to it. <laughs> Quite a long hair actually. And one of my favourites, or probably my favourite, is this. Matchbox Specials. 
It's in pretty good condition as well, considering. Uh, Matchbox Specials Lancia Rally. Matchbox International Limited, made in China. Well, this actually do does it have a copyright date? It does. What's the copyright date on this? Same year I was born, 1983. Doesn't necessarily mean that's how old the car is, it just means that's when this was first released. Um, that's when the copyright started, but a lot of these manufacturers, they, um, you know, released um, the same models. Oh, I'm struggling with my words. They release the same models like two or three years after the original release date, so I don't know what the history is of it, so I can't tell you <laughs> when it was first released. Right. <clears throat> now I've got my brain back into gear. I think it slipped out of gear for a moment now. I do apologise. Um, let's do the new Hot Wheels, which I actually bought from Sainsbury's a couple of weeks ago. And it's actually very unlike me to leave them in their packets this long. Usually I've ripped them open by now. So I've got them in t as 10 and I've got them in pairs. So we have up first, we have two Mustangs. We have a 2000 Ford Mustang. A 2004, a 2005 Mustang. I think I need to get the brand's gearbox checked, don't you? <laughs> Custom eight, um, 2018 Ford Mustang GT. So they would be for the Ford Mustang box. The only problem is it's overflowing. I need a bigger box for the Mustangs. Next up, we've got a 2006 Pontiac GTO. And with that, we actually have a 1965 Mustang 2 Plus 2 of Fastback. Next up, you might get the impression in a minute that I actually like Mustangs. <laughs> a Dodge Challenger drift car and a Ford Shelby GT350R Mustang. Next pair we have a Dodge Viper SRT10 ACR and the Cockney Cab 2, which is just a hot rodded London cab. By the way, I'm not the sort of guy that likes just one particular brand of car or just one car. You know, I mean, you get the Ford guys, you get the Chevy guys, you get the Vauxhall guys, you know. The Fiat lovers, Renault fans, Citroen fans, you get all of them. I'm just a bit of everything. I like, there's, if you name a brand, I am most likely able to tell you my favourite car from that um, brand. I've got nothing against people that, you know, just love that one brand of vehicle or one car in particular you do you it's just I don't know I just don't feel I can just stick to one I just like lots of things it's just me you know I'm me you are you <laughs> we're all different I like lots of different vehicles anyway the last two for the new Hot Wheels at least is a 1987 Dodge D100 and a 1994 Bugatti EB110 SS, I think that is. I'm not sure if that's two S's or two fives. And to be honest, out of that pair, I'd rather have the Dodge. I'm not really a sort of like a supercar, sports car sort of person. I mean, I like it. It does look nice, that Bugatti. If I'd won it in a competition, I wouldn't say no to it, but... If I had two cars in front of me, these two right in front of me, you know, and they were waving the keys in front of me and said, you can pick whichever one, I'd pick the Dodge. I suppose, if anything, I am just a bland car fan. I'd rather have the bland cars. 
You know, I'd probably rather have a Yugo over that bloody Bugatti. No, there's no probably about it. I would have the Yugo over a Bugatti. <laughs> it's probably why I like watching um, a YouTuber called Hubnut. Because he likes bland cars as well. Um, but to me, in my mind, the bland cars are still part of our motoring history. Even the crap ones are. Um, which is why I think such vehicles deserve some recognition as well. Anywho. Let's do the three Corgi vans I got off, uh, I don't know what to call them really, an acquaintance, friendly acquaintance, dealer, car booter, him, <laughs> anyway, um, so the first one out of three vans is the Ford Transit, the instant support unit for Amy Mouchel, 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 maybe. I wonder if that phone number is still connected to anything. Now, this had half a box. <laughs> um, and by that I mean it was still attached to the inner bit. You know, the cardboard bit that slides into the box. It was still attached to that, but there was no outer box. So I got rid of that. Um, I also got from him... AA Escort van. And I've pretty much taken a liking to collecting these and the Transit vans. Pardon me. Um, the Escort van did have a box as well, a complete box, but it was rather smashed up. <laughs> um, thankfully the model itself is absolutely fine, it's still mint. Uh, but the box, not so much, so I got rid of that as well. And this one didn't have a box, but I really do like the old Bedford vans. It's an old Bedford CA. Um, what was it? The um, AA Road Service. Now, I've actually got some vanguards over here. And out of curiosity, I actually put the number plate from the police van into the DVLA number plate checker, and it actually came up as a real van. I don't think the van actually exists anymore, but at some point it, that number plate belonged to a real van. So I'm tempted to do it with this one as well at some point, just to see if it comes up as a van that actually existed. So, well then again, I suppose if it doesn't come up with anything, it doesn't necessarily mean it didn't exist. It just means there's nothing on record. <coughs> but anyway, yeah, if I could own a classic van, a Bedford CA would actually be one of my choices. Or if I wanted, you know, like a smaller van like this, it would be a Bedford HA van. Don't know why, I just really like the look of the Bedford HA vans. Or failing that, it would actually be an Escort van like that, because I quite like those as well. Right. So, lastly for part one. <laughs> I've got five um, Britain's tractors here. Now I did buy, I think I've got ten in total, so I think I, uh, yeah, I bought four from this guy earlier in the year, along with a few other Britain's things like a couple of Britain's um, milk tankers and flatbed trucks. I think there's two. I can't remember without going in the bedroom and having a look. Um, I'm pretty certain I did do a video on those. If I didn't, let me know, and I'll do a video on the whole lot together as well. Anyway, um, naturally these these were a decent price, actually. I thought he would have put these up for more than what they were. But anyway, I'm going to start this end and work that way. So, <clears throat> we have got a Dutz Far, just got the twin tyres put on, and I've actually noticed... That Britain's someone, maybe the tyre fell off and someone's put it on. But this tyre is actually on backwards. In comparison to the other 246, 7. 
So I don't know if that came from the factory like that or if this tire's been pulled off and someone's put it on backwards, but I've just managed to peel it off. Can I get it back on? I can indeed. There we go. Maybe someone did peel it off and they just put it on round the wrong way. But it's correct now. I don't know if you can see it in this light. <laughs> I was just looking at this earlier and I thought that tyre don't look right. It's backwards compared to the others. And um, At the moment this is the only tractor I've actually got in the collection which has got the uh, double wheels on. Um, the Fords, I've actually got four different Fords. And I've actually got two Renaults, which I thought were exactly the same when I saw the pictures on Facebook. They're not. They are actually um, slightly different. But I can't see what the model number is on the other one. I mean, what's this one? This one's a Renault 145-2. I don't think Renault still make tractors. Don't look bad tractors to me, don't look like a bad design. I don't know if they were reliable in real life, but uh, I was a bit miffed because not long after I got those ones uh, that's still in the bedroom, I broke the three point linkage on the other Renault. It just got stuck and it wouldn't lift up, and I just pressed on that lever a bit too hard and it just broke it all. Unfortunately, but yeah, nice Renault there. Uh, next up, we've got a little Ford. Don't know what sort of Ford it is, but I did have to do a bit of a repair. I had to super glue this fender back on. Oh, sorry, I'm off camera. Because um, I was just pushing it like this, and it just went doink. But looking down in here, when I when the fender was off. It actually looks like someone had glued that back on before, so I don't think I was the one that actually broke it. But yeah, I've actually got it back on. It came with a little plough on it as well. I keep drifting off camera. I'm so good at this camera stuff, aren't I? He says sarcastically. <laughs> Not even, because he fell off, so I put a bit of super glue on him as well. So I didn't lose him. Um, I'm not sure what type of Ford that is, it doesn't say, um, the guy got it off thinks it's a Fordson Major, but it doesn't say Fordson, it just says Ford, and it looks um, a bit too new to be a Major. And in fact, this isn't a Britons. Looking at those headlights, oh actually, yes it is, I've just seen the wheels. It's just that... Those headlights were something that Corgi liked to do back in the day, you know, when they looked like little crystals or diamonds. So I was thinking for a second there that might have been a Corgi tractor. Um, can't see anything on the bottom there. I'm actually wondering, looking at it, if someone's actually glued the wheel together because there's a lot of glue behind there. And I've also noticed that the whoops. I've got a funny feeling when I glued this up. Oh yeah, it is Britons. It's got one of the attachments on the back here for a Britons. <clears throat> I think when I actually glued up that fender, I've actually got some glue on three-point linkage, so it's stuck in that position now. I'm not forcing anything. I'm just going to leave it as is now. I mean, it works for that little plow. Look what I've just done. Plowing that way up, is it? <laughs> a word of advice to YouTubers or anyone thinking of starting a YouTube channel. Don't do them late at night. Because <laughs> your brain tends to stop working. Anyway, we'll move on to the next one. And uh, off camera, I actually noticed something with this. This is a Ford. It is Britain's, but it's a Ford TW35. And I noticed the 
front does this. There's a little battery compartment in there. Didn't know Britons did such a thing. So right here I've got batteries. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to work. Assuming it goes that way in. It goes one way in. That is one tough battery compartment. I can't... Ooh. No, it's not working. And sometimes that doesn't catch. You see, it's freewheeling now. Um, shit, am I going to get that out of there? <laughs> yeah. It does look like the front contact there needs a clean. I don't even know if that's actually a good battery. It could be a dead one for all I know. No, that one's not doing anything either. Unless I'm putting the batteries in the wrong way, I don't know. Ah. No, even around that way I don't seem to be doing anything. But like I said, that contact looks like it needs a clean. I'll see if I can get it working. One day. All this little switch does, it literally just pushes that battery contact into the battery. But yeah, it's, it's a motorised tractor. I had no idea Britain's actually did anything like that. It would be great if I could get it working, wouldn't it? I might, tomorrow, just put a dab of super glue on that because that's wobbling around. That's going to annoy me otherwise. And last, but not least, <coughs> is a little um, 2680 Massey Ferguson. I wouldn't mind some more Massey Fergusons in my collection because I do like those. This one hasn't got a detachable front, has it? No, <laughs> we can't put a battery in that one. Yeah, I quite like that. <clears throat> That's a fun little story, almost a week ago now. These tractors just reminded me, actually. Um, last Sunday I went on a little road trip with my stepdad to pick up a table saw. Quite an old one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because um, he wanted to replace his. Because he's got a nice new one which has got handles on it and wheels. You can just wheel it around and set it up wherever. Um, but he's only used it like a dozen, maybe, maybe two dozen times in the last year. It's not really had a great deal of use at all and uh, it doesn't cut straight well it does for the first cut but then after that everything just slides out of alignment and then you've got to mess around realigning everything <clears throat> and it was just annoying him so he found this one on marketplace it is a vintage one we think sort of 1940s maybe 1950s um, and it uh, weighs an absolute ton because not only is the motor itself like this big I dread to think how many horsepower it is it is a huge freaking motor in there it's in a cast iron cabinet <laughs> so it is bloody heavy um, yeah but when we arrived um, it was a very large yard with a lot of brambles and stuff growing all over the place. And there was just random vehicles dotted everywhere, including, I would estimate, there must have been over 12 tractors dotted about there, vintage tractors. Um, you know, some Fords. There was an Alice Chalmers there that I could see he got from an auction because it still had the lot number written on it um, 
Some of them looked like they'd been parked there for donkey's years because there was actually at least two, maybe three there, just totally blocked off by brambles. You wouldn't have been able to get to them without a fight. <laughs> um, but there was a number there that actually weren't that bad. And a couple, I could see there was at least two he was working on. The Alice Chalmers looked like they'd been packed there quite recently, and from the looks of it and the condition of it, it was in very good condition. Um, and I'd have said if you cranked that over with the crank handle, it would have probably started. Um, and I could see another Ford there, quite a large cabless Ford. Um, that looked like it was actually, you know, used because it was completely free of any weed. There was an old van there being used as a shed, an old Renault van. Big high top long wheel base thing. Um, <laughs> that's quite a few different things. It was that sort of yard that even if you walked through it ten times, on that tenth trip you'd still see something that you didn't notice the first nine times. <laughs> a very interesting place to be. Very interesting place. <clears throat> right. That will be it for this video. Be it for part one. So in part two, it's that bag of stuff and the box of Hot Wheels. So thanks a lot for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I will most likely upload part two right after uploading this one. So they will run on from each other sort of thing. Um, so yeah, as always, you know, I'll put all the usual links in the description, you know, to the gaming channel, the Lego channel, the Discord server. I don't really use anything else. I haven't got a Facebook page for any of the channels. Not um, Actually, I have got a Facebook page for the Lego one. <clears throat> um, I don't really know what other social media to use. I don't use Twitter. Um, I lost access to that account when I a while back when they upgraded all the security stuff and I just haven't been able to frickin' log in ever since. And, well, I'm not even going to get into what Elon Musk has done with it, so I'm, I'm actually glad I don't use Twitter, to be honest. <clears throat> um, yeah, I've actually got an Instagram, but I don't post to it, so... Yeah, anyway. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in part two. Bye.